Okay, go ahead, Chuck. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Education. It is Tuesday, October 27th, 2020. We are ho holding this meeting virtually in accordance with the governor's executive order. Ellen, can we have roll call, please? Yes, Chairperson Kerry. Good evening, everyone. Mr. Cassio? Present. Mrs. Evans? Mrs. Granado? Present. Mr. Lesser? Here. <clears throat> Mr. Michaels? Here. Mrs. Paradise? Present. Mr. Riley? Here. Vice Chairperson, Mr. Healy? Here. Chairperson, Mr. Carey? Here. And Weathersfield High School Student Representative, Diago Wynn? Present. All present. Thank you. Mr. Cassio, will you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Absolutely. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes from October 13th, 2020, regularly scheduled board meeting? So moved. So moved. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Paradise. Any comments, questions? Seeing none with a motion on the table to approve minutes, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Abstain. So noted. Motion passes. Thank you. Next agenda item, public comment. Yes, thank you, Mr. Carey. I have two uh, people waiting in the waiting room, so we'll admit 860-212-7884. Uh, Good evening. Two one two seven eight eight four. They maybe they're not unmuted, like me. No, they're uh, there. It was unmuted for a second. Okay. Then they muted themselves. Okay. I'm gonna admit the. Oh, second. Here they are. All Good right. Good evening. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> if you could say your name and address for the record. Sure, the Jennifer. St. Hilaire, 40 Hawthorne Way in Wethersfield. Excellent, thank you, you have five minutes. So I was not able to hear anything previously, so I apologize if there has been a conversation. I'm calling, I called in tonight to ask a couple questions of the board in response to the letter that was sent out today um, by uh, Mr. Emmett regarding the decision to move from uh, we're going forward with the full uh, schedule to remote. I was wondering if there was ever going to be an opportunity where we heard more fully the decision and if there was ever going to be an opportunity for the parents to weigh in and be part of this process. It's rather unsettling to receive a letter at this late hour when people have made childcare arrangements. I understand it's a fluid situation, but I wonder why we are different than every other town in our health district that's allowed their elementary schools to go back full time. I understand that the middle and high school can present a challenge, but our children are suffering. They're not getting the educational needs that they have. Their mental and emotional health is struggling with this. And I just would ask the board to be more transparent and open and hear the concerns that are being raised by the parents, because I have not seen the opportunity yet to have that dialogue with the people who send their kids and are interested in making sure that their education is continued. All right, thank you. Mr. Carey, our other uh, public comment uh, phone call has dropped out. Okay. 
That caller's still in here, Michael. Are we going to? I'm sorry, say again, Mr. Carey. The caller's still in our room. I think she's expecting a response now. Chuck, tell her that it's not dialogue right now. Maybe there that's Elaine took care of it, but just so sorry. That, no, no, it's okay. <laughs> we do not make comment during public comment, just so you're aware. Moving on, communications, Mr. Emmett. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Carey. Good evening, everyone. And uh, again, I understand that we don't respond to public comment, but certainly my communications this evening um, are pertinent to uh, the public comment from Ms. St. Hilaire, as well as a variety of other parents. Um, obviously, uh, this is a fluid situation. And it was our intent to move forward with a transitional um, reopening of the Weatherstool Public Schools. Um, we were looking at starting next Monday with grades uh, pre-K, K and one. We were also looking at um, bringing back a team for grade seven, a team for grade eight. And we were looking at bringing back our um, high school seniors. Uh, we have had ongoing conversations with the Department of Public Health, as well as the Central Connecticut Health District. And the reality that we are facing right now is we are seeing a significant increase in the number of cases. And we had a conversation with the DPH this morning, uh, talking about the fact that Hartford County has now moved into the moderate range. Uh, one of the pieces of advice from DPH today was to reduce the person density. And that's exactly opposite of what our reopening plan does, unfortunately. I also had the conversation with Charles Brown, the director of the Central Connecticut Health District this morning at approximately 11 o'clock. And he reports that Weathersfield specifically has seen a significant increase in the number of positive cases over the past three weeks. So much so that in the past day, he reports 10 positive cases in the day alone. On average through late uh, August and into September, we were averaging no more than five cases per week. So we're clearly seeing a, uh, an increase and a spike in the number of cases. With that being said, I will say that the hybrid model thus far has served us well through the first eight plus weeks of school. We've had a total of three positive cases among our students and our student community. We have had zero cases at the uh, staff level. Um, we have traced back the um, infection to outside, to community spread. Um, some of the other factors that we're dealing with also is an increasing number of students being quarantined. And we're finding that the bulk of our quarantines are based upon family gatherings and youth sports at this juncture. Certainly, it's my intent to bring kids back full time. It's absolutely what I want. It's best for kids. But I've also got the reality of increasing COVID numbers, the reality that our mitigation strategies are certainly going to be affected with regard to social distancing, and knowing full well that we've got an upcoming Thanksgiving holiday that um, we are fearful, quite frankly, of additional spread. Um, we have been able to handle this uh, process thus far very well. Um, and my hope is, is that we're not going to have to get to a point where I have to close a school or we have to close down because we're short staff or because we have to have so many quarantined that we're unable to staff our buildings effectively. We're trying to provide the absolute utmost of educational opportunity for our kids while still maintaining a level of health and safety. Um, we see this as a continued fluid situation. Um, obviously, we'll have a cohort calendar forthcoming tomorrow. Um, I can certainly understand Ms. St. Hilaire's concern around this, this late notice. Um, our hope was to be able to start this reopening process next Monday. That was the intent. And the amount of work that's gone into this reopening planning has been extensive. It's not going away. We're not putting it on the shelf and leaving it there. We've clearly got a plan where we can bring students back into the building, but we must do so in a manner that is as safe and as healthy as possible for our students, for our families, and for our staff. Um, so that is where we're at with regard to the um, reopening. 
Um, one of the things I want to make sure that the board and the public are aware of also, um, one of the things that we did was we did a survey with regard to the number of parents opting for remote learning. Um, when we started during the summer with regard to remote versus hybrid, we had approximately 84% of our families say hybrid and 16% say um, full remote. With the option of full reopening versus full remote, the numbers were virtually unchanged. Um, so we did not see a significant number of families that opted to do the full remote. The full remote option will remain an option. The state has clearly articulated that they are not taking that off the table at this particular point in time. So we continue to have the bulk of our families wishing to have full in-person learning, which again, will certainly tax our ability to maintain social distance in our elementary classrooms. A um, Couple of other items for you, um, just to let you know, last evening we had our first uh, session of the Social Justice Coalition. Uh, this is a joint effort between the Town of Wethersfield and the Wethersfield Board of Education. Uh, we've done two informational sessions um, and last evening we had a total of 71 participants that uh, uh, sat in on the meeting virtually and uh, we have another meeting coming up uh, that is scheduled for November 30th. So um, we're certainly looking forward to having additional residents um, participate in this important endeavor. This is something that's going to be taking place over time. It's not a quick fix. It's not a one and done. Um, but we hope to make some meaningful change in the town of Wethersfield moving forward. Uh, just an update with regard to uh, winter sports. Right now at this point in time, we wait additional uh, information from the CIAC. I understand today during our DPH call that the CIAC and the DPH are going to be talking. Um, right now there is a tentative schedule um, for the start of winter sports uh, with practices beginning uh, on November 21st. At this juncture, we're going to be uh, continuing to wait till probably mid-November for CIAC to make a decision with regard to uh, <coughs> sports that are considered a higher risk. Uh, those might be wrestling, ice hockey, uh, boys and girls basketball, and of course, uh, indoor track with regard to facilities and availability of facilities to host meets. So I have more information forthcoming. Um, I am pleased to say that thus far, our uh, fall sports schedule is moving along nicely. Um, we're having some great success with our athletic teams and uh, they're doing well. And I have to say to parents, thank you very much for honoring our limited number of spectators. Um, I do know that some districts have banned spectators altogether. I'm glad that uh, we've been able to at least let moms and dads be able to see their uh, children participate in sports. Um, and finally, last but not least, I do wanna mention and give a shout out to our principals. Uh, October is National Principals Month. so. Mr. Moore, Ms. Bannon, uh, Ms. Takor, Mr. Horder, uh, Mr. Cohn, Mr. Craig, and Ms. O'Connor, thank you very much for all of the work you're doing here for the Weathers Hill Public Schools. And with that, that is the conclusion of communication. <coughs> thank you, Mr. Emmett. Moving on, we have an action item. Mr. Healy, do, we, do you have a recommended motion for us? Yes, um, I apologize. Uh, recommendation. Um, uh, it's not the class size at some point. Okay, recommend to uh, make a motion. I move that the Weathersfield Board of Education approve an extension to the current unpaid leave of absence for identification number 905406 beyond the previously approved 60 days of unpaid leave granted by the superintendent and the Board of Education. This request is for extended unpaid leave beginning on November 9th, 2020 and continuing through December 31st, 2020 of the 2020-2021 school year. Thank you, do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Paradise. Mr. Emmett, any discussion? This uh, simply is an extension of a leave that you have already uh, approved. Um, I certainly support this uh, unpaid leave uh, for this particular employee. And Mike, is this going yeah. smoothly with the sub? Yes, it is, is Elaine. Yes. Okay, thanks. Okay, Chuck? Yes, Ms. Granado. Um, just a question, Michael. Do we have a lot of people on a leave of absence this year with this 
We, we have, uh, in terms of COVID leave, uh, we have a handful. Um, again, we have the variety from surgical procedures to maternity leaves uh, to medical leaves. Um, so right now we're, we're running slightly above where we typically are this time of year. Um, but that's something that Mr. Donahue monitors very frequently. Trent, do you have anything else to add with regard to that? Yeah, so thank you, Michael. Um, as Michael indicated, you know, it's a fairly typical year with the number of people that are out for a variety of different reasons, medical um, and other. In regards to COVID, I think our, uh, our employees have been incredibly responsive to, you know, making it a priority to be at work when, when they can. Uh, we have had a number of folks that have expressed an interest in, in a need to be away from work, whether it's for their own personal situation, to care for a loved one, or we've had a number of situations that have been emergency daycare and child care issues for where families just haven't been able to secure daycare. So we're managing through all of those. We've started to see some folks come back. Uh, we have a, a number of folks that are hopefully coming back during the month of November and early December. And we continue to uh, monitor that very closely. And as Michael indicated, this is just simply somebody that's currently out and needs a little bit longer before they feel comfortable returning to, to work. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none with a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Thank you, everyone. <clears throat> Moving on to reports and discussion items. Annual class size report as of 10-1-2020. Mr. Emmett. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Carey. Uh, in your Friday packet uh, and posted up on our website is the uh, annual class size report uh, for the Weathersfield Public Schools. Um, this is a document that we create each year to give us a uh, flavor of what our numbers are looking like at that uh, October 1st mark. Um, I can report uh, that currently the Weathersfield Public Schools has 3,542 students um, enrolled. This is a decrease of 38 students compared to October 1st of 2019. Um, in pre-K, we currently have 62 students. Last year, we had 68. At the elementary level, K-6, this year, uh, we reported 1,770 students. Last year, on October 1st, we had 1,700. 195. At the middle school level, grades seven and eight, this year we report 578 students. Last year we reported 567, so a slight increase there. At the high school level, um, as of 10-1-2020, 20, we reported 1,121 students. And uh, last year we had 1,144. And our transition academy for our students in age, uh, ages 18 to 21, uh, this year, our enrollment count is currently 11 students, and that is up uh, from six last year. So we've seen a sizable increase in the number of students in our uh, WTA program. From a standpoint of class size, um, obviously this report summarizes class size enrollment for elementary, middle, and high school. Uh, as of October 1st, 2020, at the elementary level, the elementary uh, level average class size is 18.72 students per classroom. This is up slightly uh, compared to the 18.49 in 1920. The average class size for middle school is 21.42 and it is 19.79 for the high school. And I'd like to also report that overall, uh, we have two fewer elementary classrooms uh, compared to 2019. With regard to enrollment, uh, table one uh, discusses the enrollment numbers and current class sizes. Um, for the most part, our class sizes look good across the elementary level. Um, we do see higher numbers at the uh, intermediate grade levels, grades five and six, and they are spread pretty consistently across the district. At the middle and high school levels, um, you'll see a slight difference compared to last year's um, Class size report, um, some of the uh, reasons for that are the fact that we shifted to a full year PE to trimester-based PE. We shifted full year music to trimester-based music for band, chorus, and orchestra. And we eliminated the 2.5 day and 30 day schedule rotations in favor of full term length classes offered each day. 
And again, the October 1st class size report is a snapshot of the classes that we're actively running on that date. At the high school level, again, you'll see some changes in the total number of classes. Um, Weathersfield High School approached scheduling differently for the 2021 school year. Um, they are fortunate to have someone who has previous schedule building experience and utilize the knowledge to rebuild the high school schedule. Obviously, our focus is making sure that we're providing the utmost and opportunities for our students. Um, again, the high school made a few adjustments based on the pandemic as well. Uh, one, classes were given a firm maximum size, which forced no classes to fall within the 30 plus student range. Um, this was obvious even within the hybrid model and cohorting, limiting the number of physical bodies in a particular classroom. Some of our high school classrooms uh, are not very large. Um, in addition to that, uh, they had the unfortunate decision to not run robotics this year. Again, um, in the pandemic, we had to make some tough decisions with regard to uh, availability of courses. So robotics uh, had to uh, go by the wayside for this year. Um, it is a popular course, but it relies on group work and in speaking with the teacher and not knowing where that pandemic was headed, they made the decision to offer other electives like transportation and construction that could be shifted toward individual instruction and the allowance of effective social distancing. Again, I think uh, the high school, the middle school and elementary schools have done yeoman's work with regard to scheduling. Obviously at the middle and high school levels, the scheduling is a little bit more complex uh, because of the fact that we're trying to provide kids with as many different opportunities as possible. So um, with that, uh, I will answer any questions you have. Uh, and again, if there's something I can't answer this evening, I will certainly get that information out to uh, the individual schools for follow-up. Thank you, Mr. Emmett. Does anyone have any questions? For Mr. Emmett. Yes, Elaine. Mike, I, I just heard you say that we had to do away with robotics, which became part of the uh, curriculum when we got the new school open because we had the corner wing there where they could have the uh, availability to do that. And I'm sad that we have to do that, but I understand the pandemic. But my mm -hmm. question now says, you said that we can't do that because we have group work there. How are we handling science in the elementary now? Because that was always group work too. If I think Bobby would say that's right, right? A group was little sets of people working on sound or uh, how is that being delivered? Yeah, actually great question, Elaine. And, and going even beyond science, let's think about uh, teachers, uh, teachers college, readers, writers workshop. Um, we yeah. do a lot. I, the, the way we educate our kids, we, we focus on that small group instruction. We yeah. focus on collaboration. And you know, this pandemic mm -hmm. has forced us to reconfigure our rooms where we've done away with those kidney shaped tables where you had a teacher that was, you know, yes. doing running records with, with small groups of kids while other kids were working interactively. Um, the, the challenge that we face is in terms of maintaining that social distance, we've had to go back to a more traditional approach um, where we have spread out classrooms and desks are in rows. Um, there is a lot of reliance upon uh, technology, even for those students that are in in-person learning because of the fact we've got a cohort at home coupled with the students that are um, uh, accessing full remote. So a lot of reliance upon technology, Elaine, and a yep. lot of, of individual work, unfortunately. Yes, okay. I just wanted to clarify, because I thought I saw, maybe it was on Facebook, or some teacher doing us activity with the smart board. I think it was like dissecting a frog or something. I couldn't see the animal, but maybe she was sharing the parts of an insect, who knows. But that's more the delivery now than the kids actually looking at an insect in a, in a, on their desk and saying there's notice three parts. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, any other questions or comments? Excellent, thank you, Mr. Emmett. You're welcome. Moving on to uh, announcements information, please look in your packet in case there is a committee meeting. If you cannot make it, make sure you let the chair of the committee know. Uh, Board of Ed meetings held, WEC, 10 2020 that stands for Weathersfield Early Childhood Collaborative. Ms. Granado. Okay, well, the WEC had their annual meeting, which is Weathersfield Early Childhood Collaborative, on October 20th. And we actually had a very large group. There were over 50 people um, participating in this virtual meeting. Coordinator is Kim Bobbin, she was our host. Whitney Simmons, an early childhood consultant, spoke of working with parents, children, and teachers to solve early learners' issues before they enter school and working with young school-aged children. 
Um, next, the group was led in a discussion by um, our own Sally Destoli, who was working with comments on how COVID was affecting families and school. The guest speaker for the evening was Donna Rooney, an early childhood specialist who spoke on supporting our children, the impact of COVID on the development of young children. And um, I just got today in the minutes um, that there was the TLC virtual preschool program is currently being offered by the town of Wethersfield. And to please go to the Wethersfield Gov recreation site um, to sign up and that's for three and four year olds. And also there was um, information about a, uh, books called Bright by Text that are free to caregivers and families. So those are available for um, parents. I must thank Kim. She organized this beautifully so that we enjoyed a virtual um, meeting. We didn't have anything to eat like we usually do, but she did an excellent job in informing in our annual meeting. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Granato. Uh, correct Council, 10-21-20, Mr. Granato. Yeah, so the next day, I sat in the same seat and we did the correct Council, which is the Capital Regional Education Council, um, of which Weathersfield is a member along with 35 other surrounding towns. This council is responsible for the regional magnet schools, Project Choice, and also this year, CREC has started the school year with organizing and working the Head Start program in the Hartford area. Um, the committee reports included information that CREC's finances are being audited and they soon hope to have final results. Tim Sullivan, who is the superintendent of CREC, expressed his delight in the success of the teacher residency program. And I read that elsewhere tonight in um, our superintendent's goals, which is student teaching, teaching and working to find a diverse group of young educators. And they also spend just about the whole year student teaching. Um, there have been 11 graduates of this program who are now working as full-time teachers, both with CREC and other school systems. Um, interesting, they did have another drive through so that remote learners could get supplies to continue their learning away from their classroom. And last, Patrice McCarthy, the legislature's liaison for CABE and CREC, spoke of a possible virtual assembly of the legislation legislators on November 19th. The assembly hopes to put um, less on the plates of school systems and to support them more. So those are my remarks on WEC and CREC. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Granado. Next, Student Programs Service Committee 10-21-20, Mr. Healy. Uh, yeah, uh, the committee met earlier this week and uh, obviously by Zoom and had a very uh, thorough presentation uh, offered, uh, coordinated through Sally uh, of number, how we're doing with remote learning and how we're <clears throat> approaching it, <clears throat> excuse me, and how it's working at the K through 12 level. Uh, so we spent a couple hours uh, going through uh, programmatically how uh, our teachers are trying to engage kids obviously every day with uh, different form formats and uh, protocols and some of the things they've learned and their personal experiences. So uh, it, was a, it was a very good briefing. Also, um, we're doing a lot as well to reach out to parents, uh, to listen to their concerns, to coordinate with them on learning and following up with kids and, and uh, answering some of the questions that they've had. So it was a, a pretty uh, extensive and uh, thoughtful um, uh, presentation. Thank you. F Finance and Operations Committee, 10 20 Mr. Michaels. Thank you, Mr. Carey. I uh, just had a quick update from Matt this evening. Uh, he shared a brief forecast. We are about 363,000 under budget in what continues to be a very fluid school year. Hopefully our numbers will become a little more solid as we move through November and December um, to be able to plan for the rest of the school year. Uh, the other thing we just touched on briefly is that uh, we will begin some pre-planning stuff as we 
begin the budget process uh, coming up shortly. So more to come on that as that process begins. Thank you, Mr. Michaels. Meeting scheduled, Weathersfield Early Childhood Collaborative, the WEC, which will be at 11, 9, 20 at 4.30. There is no unfinished business. Mr. Emmett, is there anyone on the pipeline for public comment? You're muted. Oh. Michael, you're muted. I got it. Thank you. We have 860-680-5154. Uh, Thank you for coming back on. Please unmute yourself. State your name and address for the record. Four. Thank you for coming back on. Uh, yes. Please unmute yourself. State your name and address for the record. Four. Thank you for coming back on. This is Melissa Zaparanik at 131 Valley View Drive. This is Melissa Zaparanik at 131 Valley View Drive. This is All right, you may. Can you hear me? I'm sorry about that. Yeah, no, it's okay. Yes, we can hear you. Yes, um, so I have a couple of questions in regards to the decisions that were made today in regards to the children not going back full time. <clears throat> the first question I have is that I understand that there's been some exceptions made to allow some students to go back for both cohorts. I was wondering what the exception process is and how that promotes the right to equal um, education, quality in education when not all of the students can go back full time. Okay, just the so you know, question, public, oh, okay, there you go. You're, keep yeah, going. You're the good. second question that I have is that I would like to understand why if our state is in phase three um, and our students can be um, in restaurants with 75% capacity and they could be with worshiping with 200 people um, <clears throat> and we, your numbers today indicate that the class average class sizes are 18 with 60% of the students back, why they can't be in class sizes of 10. Um, we have gotten an enormous amount of um, feedback from teachers indicating that the students are doing a fantastic job with the masks and they're doing a fantastic job with the cleaning in the facilities. Um, and I really think that uh, it's time to get these kids back in school. <clears throat> and I also, I think the one of the comments that you made tonight was that the majority of parents believe that the kids should be back in school. And I'm curious why we're not listening to those parents and trying to find ways to get them back in school. And lastly, I'd like to understand a little bit more about the surrounding towns, because I understand that Rocky Hill is back full time for their elementary kids. I understand that Newington is back four days a week. I understand that Cromwell is back. I have friends in the Crex schools where they've actually had positive cases and their kids are back full time as well. I would like to understand what the differences are between our <clears throat> schools and theirs, um, specifically uh, associated with the health district, because I believe we all share the same health district. Those are my final comments. Thank you very much. Anyone else on the line, Mr. Emmett? Uh, no one else on the line, Mr. Carey. Thank you. Moving on to board comment. Anyone wishing to make board comment? Yes, Ms. Paradise. Sorry, guys, but um, I have one comment here. Um, I understand totally what the parents are feeling. Even though my children are out of school, it's the babysitting and it's the helping those little ones. Even on my street, the parents are going nuts with the little ones trying to get them online. And I guess, Mike, I do understand them comparing us to Rocky Hill and other schools when you say the Department of Health, because I think that same Charles Brown covers those towns um, with the COVID numbers and the DPH's reports. So I do think those people who called in need a, a, a clarification on why uh, we're not reopening if um, those towns can keep going. Maybe it's just our, our uh, social distancing problem. But I also want the parents to know, and Chuck, you need to help me here, um, that we as a board are not getting the survey results, not getting the health department data that Mike's getting. And the decision on reopening when or going hybrid when is coming from an administrative team, not from the board. So I think when the people call in and say, you know, they hear Mike use the word we or have talked to Charles Brown, we as a board haven't talked to him. We get only the same data the parents get. So I, I think that's a clarification. They're calling in for our help 
you, Chuck, John, um, Bobby, and yet we, we're only part of the team to hear the decisions made not making the decisions. So I think that's a clarification, the town, because, and I don't think it's anyone's fault, except that the news gets outside and you see New Haven's board making the decision. So it's an assumption that people see that the board is part of this decision-making, you know, or you see another town on the, on the TV news saying, well, the board has decided not to open till the end of October. Uh, so I, I would just like the parents to know that we are not the decision-makers. There's a team that gets the up-to-date data to make these decisions. Um, and I don't know who's on that team except my cabinet, but you might know Chuck. So that's my board comment. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to make a comment? Mr. Lesser. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a couple things. First, the Career Advisory Board met last night. We had a spirited meeting, 12 or 13 folks. And we have three things that I'll talk about real quickly. One is we're gonna do a remote career fair and we're gonna partner with Newington. As many of you remember uh, and know, uh, Mark Danaher originally came from Newington and has great uh, contacts there. And I think this will be a good opportunity for our students and also uh, be able to expand uh, the number of businesses. Second is we have three lunch and learn scheduled with business professionals to come in and talk to our students. And thirdly, we have 40 parents who signed up to do mock interviews. So we did this last year. Some of you may have participated. I had the opportunity to participate in the mock interviews. It's a great opportunity to help the students with interview skills. Uh, and again, this is all to help them build the career building skills uh, and the skills necessary to go on past Wethersfield High School into college and careers. And then, uh, so that's it for the Career Advisory Board. And I did ask Michael this earlier, but maybe he can go over and comment. Uh, snow day, I'm getting the people saying, well, what's gonna happen on Friday? And I said, I don't know if, if it's gonna, they're saying it's gonna snow. And then the second one is I also have had some questions, um, Michael, that election day, we're off on Tuesday. Is Wednesday gonna be a typical Wednesday um, where we're closed or is Wednesday, I guess that's November 4th, uh, what kind of day that is. So I'm getting some parents who have asked me that. Snow days and election the day after election day. Yeah, I'll talk uh, to, to both, Kenny. Thank you for the questions. With regard to the snow days, uh, we had approached the State Department of Education to look at the feasibility of um, being able to utilize a remote learning day in lieu of a snow day and have that count. Um, the Commissioner of Education went to the State Board of Education. Uh, they approved allowing us to utilize a remote learning day in lieu of a snow day, uh, but charged the State Department of Education with providing guidelines with how to go about doing that. Um, those guidelines came out through CABE this evening, so I haven't even had the opportunity to look at them. Um, we've had some conversation with our teachers union about this already. Um, I think that it, it will um, involve some planning. Obviously, from my perspective, um, I think what's going to end up happening is um, I'm probably likely going to have to make the decision for a, a closure or to go to remote learning uh, far in advance of when I typically do, which is when I get up at three in the morning and talk with all of my area superintendent colleagues. Um, so that particular piece um, you know, remains to be sorted out. But right now, the state has given us the authority to be able to utilize a remote learning day in lieu of a snow day, having to add those days on at the end of the year. And then with regard to the um, schedule for next week, next Tuesday is a uh, election day. So it's a professional development day. As I said earlier in my communications, we will have out the November cohort uh, calendar tomorrow morning. So that will spell out exactly what we'll be doing. Also uh, important to remember the following week is Veterans Day. So Veterans Day typically is a full remote learning day, but that's a day off. So Tiago, you don't have to log in and do any asynchronous learning on Veterans Day. Um, and then just to let everybody know, with regard to Veterans Day, just a week out, um, right now we have a ceremony that is scheduled for uh, Weathersfield High School out in the parking lot. Um, and again, should conditions change with regard to infection rates going up, um, that will come from the town in terms of whether or not that would need to be canceled. So, thank, thank you, Michael. Oh, any other questions, comments, Mr. Michaels? 
Thank you, Mr. Carey. Um, just a quick note to Kenny. If you could have Mark, I'm still waiting for an email from him for that stuff. Um, second comment question about um, hybrid versus fullback and, and that. I know that we are looking at different information to make that decision. It's not just one piece that we look at. Is there, given today's numbers that have come out, which has prompted the decision to go or to stick with the hybrid model. Is it safe to say that this is, would you consider this now the baseline in which you would make that decision is I guess part one. Part two is, and I guess we'll learn perhaps more tomorrow with the, the new cohort calendar. What is the plan for number of days, weeks out from when we hit that high mark? So in the, interest of getting parents to a spot where we know it's not just because we hit 10 today and we've gone, we've switched to hybrid. That doesn't mean if the number comes down next Monday that we're back to this. So what is the, the weeks or days that that fluctuates before we are back to one or the other? Yeah, that's a great question, Lou. Thanks for that question. I had that conversation with Charles Brown today and asked about, you know, what would I be looking at in terms of time frame? And he said at this point in time, it's difficult to um, delineate exactly how long this spike is going to go. Um, we obviously have a cohort calendar available for November. Um, we've planned out a uh, cohort calendar for December. And on the flip side, you know full well, we've planned out a full reopening across the board that goes right into mid-December. So we're prepared to do either or. Um, right now, as I said um, earlier in the conversation tonight, our infection rate in Weathersfield is going up pretty significantly. Um, it's a positivity rate in Weathersfield. My last look at it yesterday afternoon was like 8.5. Um, you know, typically, as I go back to August and September, we had a positivity rate of anywhere between 0.5 and the highest in the month of September, I think was 1.4. The numbers are definitely going up. Our neighbors in Newington uh, were north of nine. Um, Newington paused their reopening plan. They started a little bit ahead of us and they've gotten in K through four and five through 12, they've stopped. Uh, many of the other districts have not uh, engaged in any conversation with regard to a um, full reopening at the middle or high school level. Um, and again, I think that, you know, what each of these districts is going to start to struggle with as the numbers continue to escalate, they are full reopening. At what point in time might they need to consider going to the hybrid? Again, I understand, Lou, that this is not something that parents are fond with, and the survey data clearly indicates that parents want their kids back in school. Um, but again, I have to balance that desire with the data that's coming forward. Um, you'll also notice uh, with regard to state data, uh, Elaine, the data that parents get the par is the same data that you get, that I get, and that's what I use. So those learning indicators are on our website. They're updated every single week. Um, this past week for the first week, it's a 14 day rolling average. We move from the low range into the moderate range. They also break it down town by town. So currently Weathersfield is listed in the yellow category, which is a certain number of infections per. And in conversation with Charles Brown today, he fully expects that Weathersfield by the end of the week will have moved up to orange or potentially uh, even up into the red. That's a significant outbreak of, of infection. We have to look at that. So that, that's the justification and the background of, of what I use. And again, I can't say this enough. It's collaboration with the health district, with the Department of Public Health as well on a weekly basis. Thank I you, have Mr. No, I, I support it totally, Michael. I just wanted to know the people to know what you're using. You know, Absolutely. certainly. That's all. Thank you. Jim, Mr. Riley. Just had a, a comment uh, in regards to uh, the book that was uh, forwarded to Hamner by uh, Catherine O'Connor. Um, she's an alumni of Hamner and went all the way through Wethersfield High School. I graduated with her. I sent her uh, 
a copy of the one page uh, Hamner uh, newsletter uh, to her and she responded back and said, thank you so much for forwarding the Hamner newsletter. That is so very good of, all, of you all on the board and Patrick Cohn for accepting the books and for this wonderful recognition. It has truly been an honor for me. I really appreciate it greatly, Catherine. Great connection. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. You're welcome. Thank you. Any other comments? Yes, Ms. Granado. Um, the Weathersfield Education Foundation met on Thursday, October 22nd, and I know they're not a committee of the board, but they're an important commi that committee that works to um, get funds for enhancing and enriching our curriculum. The mini grant committee is working to get info out to all the elementary schools about applying for grants. Um, please check out the work being done by this organization on the website and Facebook page. And after student program and services meeting the other night, you realize that they do need um, lots of hands-on things still that has not gone away. And um, mini grants are a great way to get a hold of those things. Um, the group also discussed this year's fundraiser, which is called Cook Along. And it's in collaboration with the Charles Restaurant. Um, a flyer will be out. It looks like this. Everybody will be getting one. And um, it's one of these virtual cooking in which you will cook along with Chef Tommy Caldy of the Charles. And um, you'll get a, you get a ticket. And that with the ticket comes your ingredients, a bottle of wine, and your um, YouTube site where you can go to to learn how to cook the special meal that is presented by the Charles. Uh, by the way, today, the W. Weathersfield Education Foundation was on Better Connecticut to advertise this. So the more people we can get to buy tickets, the more money that's available for mini grants and for other things that the school, um, the teachers and the schools need. Um, I also would like to thank the principals for their Friday update. It's really very challenging not to be in the schools, and I don't think we should be in the schools right now, um, but to see what's going on is wonderful, and they give us great updates, so I thank them for that. And my very last thing, my last comment is to tell people to please vote. It is your right, it's your privilege, but one of the best civic lessons you can give to your child is to bring them along, and bring them along and show them how democracy works, so thank you. Thank you. Any other board comments? Yes, Diego. I just want to make a quick comment to the board. Uh, prior to the meeting, uh, I connected to many of my high school peers and the general consensus I received was an outpouring of support for the continuation of the hybrid program. So I just wanted to bring it to, uh, uh, to the attention of the board that a uh, majority of the high school students are in support of the uh, continuation of the hybrid program. Thank you. That's good to hear. All right, any other comments? Seeing none, can I have a motion to go into executive session? So moved. A second. second. Thank you, Lou. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion passes, we're going to executive session. <laughs>